so excited right now. Very happy to talk to this lovely lady. Uh, we've talked to you before at Comic-Con, actually a couple times, mm -hmm. I believe. So uh, it's always good to catch back up. And we are in the midst, the middle, uh, the re-beginning of uh, the season again with Rick and Morty. So Spencer, uh, welcome. Yes, thank you. Thank you for having me. For sure. Uh, you know, one of the uh, one of the fun things about this show is uh, just the the fact that you have no idea where it's going to go. Is that one of your favorite things when you get that script? Because you're just like, I don't know what this is. This could this could be a sandwich. This could be a scorpion. I don't know what's in this box. I'm just going to look in here and, you know, let's see. <laughs> yes, um, completely. I it is almost like opening a present you know, an unmarked present, a present wrapped in paper, you wouldn't know of what kind of holiday um, and and seeing what's inside. Um, and I really, I really love, I really love reading it because I mean, I'm privileged to get to read it first and imagine what it might potentially look like or how it might change later um, and then get to actually see what I was right about, I suppose, um, when I get to actually see the shows, but it's, yeah, it's such a, an honor and privilege to uh, to get some of the stories. And I do think they're completely wacky a lot of the time, um, but really funny and smart. And so I appreciate that. You know, looking at this image right now, do you have your favorite form of summer? Is it the the, the buff yoked summer or the uh, the Mad Max summer? Like, do you have a specific a specific summer that you uh, that to use your favorite, let's say, image of? The summer I like the most. I know. I mean, I'm. I mean, I liked when summer was like a cool arrow shooty lady. You know, like that's totally in the realm of something I would want to wear, like a headdress and like have arrows. Um, and post apocalyptic summer was cool. Uh, um, in the <laughs> poison zone. I mean, I liked that outfit too. I kind of. I don't know. Like. Um, I'm trying to think, I really loved after the, you know, in the Cronen, we, I guess I call it the Cronenberg episode, even though right. like has its own title, but like <laughs> the Cronenberg episode where she's just like disheveled and still with like Beth and, and Jerry and telling the story of Jaws is like one of my favorite things I got to do on the show. <laughs> um, and she's just like kind of all ruined <laughs> or oh also i really loved when when they were wasps i feel oh, right. like that was one of my favorite things that um summer got to be for sure like that she was like i'm not a bee dad <laughs> like, <laughs> i don't know why i it makes me laugh every time <laughs> um, you know i really enjoyed actually the keep summer safe episode where you yeah. had to be naggy, but also like crazy and like frantic at the same exact time. <laughs> yeah, it was great. It was uh, that's one of my favorite episodes for sure. I mean, she's just in the regular summer costume, so you know, I mean, I, that's pretty. It's pretty great, like a pink tank top and white pants. Like that's it's simple, you know. Right. Um, but I, but I, I, yeah, that's definitely one of my favorites. I think that was one of my favorites to also record because as I continued to go. I mean, I go through so many experiences emotionally in that, like annoyed, terrified, saddened. Um, it was just a very exciting performance for me um, to visualize it. And I remember thinking this is going to be crazy when I finally see it uh, made in real life in animation. Um, so, yeah, that's definitely that's up there. Now, let's talk about working with some of the people, uh, of course. Uh, one of my favorite connections is you and Sarah. Chalky is fantastic. And so, like, anytime you get a chance, the, mo the mom and daughter scenario thing, yeah. I mean, is that fun for you, too? With, with, especially with her, because she doesn't seem like a, a crazy mom in real life, as far as I know. <laughs> so, I, you know, to see her kind of, like, bust this out is awesome. I know. I agree. I think she does an amazing job with with Beth. Um it's it's interesting because there I feel so many they're they're such three dimensional characters like we really get to learn and and I think also from the beginning I mean maybe summer kind of grew a little bit more over time but but Beth was like you know she she was a mother but she also had a career and like you know had kind of given up on her dreams in some ways to be a mom and it was she's always been like a really interesting uh character so when when summer and beth kind of go head to head or or are working in um collusion together it's 
it's really fun to see that um, because I, I think of them both as, as you know, feminists in their own way and intelligent women, which aren't portrayed that often in TV. Uh, it was funny. I mean, more I... now, more now. I'm not going <laughs> to, <you know. laughs> more now. There's a lot more female, you know. In For sure. Now. <laughs> you know, I guess I should ask, we, we are in the, we are in the now, the present, the, the here. So I have to ask, how is your quarantine going? Have you taken a hobby? Is there like a, like a clay pot somewhere that you just made or, or some kind of like drawing or some kind of a, you know, thing? What are, what are you doing with your time? I, listen, I've been an actor like for a really long time. <laughs> so you have years where you work all the time, it's like feast and famine all the time. So you learn to get good at making yourself busy when you don't have anything <laughs> to do. <laughs> like, so what's um, what's your Etsy ad uh, address? I guess is Etsy what I, should, I, mean, yeah. I make everything. Like, <laughs> like I have a thing that I need to know. Like, if somebody can make it in the world, like I also need to know how it's made. I, um, same here. Yep. And know that I can do it myself because I just feel like that's your role as a human being, right? Like if somebody's doing it, I gotta know, like there's a, I don't know how to cobble shoes, but at some point I will, right? Like I can knit, I can sew with a sewing machine also by hand. Like, right. I can crochet, which is very similar to knitting, but only uses one tool. Um, I make bread, which I already started doing before quarantine. Cause I was like, I eat an exorbitant amount of baguettes and have been going to France often. Um, so I was like, I gotta just learn how to make a real baguette because right. because you should just know. And then right. I can be like, but I can buy one now, you know, cause I know how to make Do you one. have the correct oven that can make sourdough with the correct water spray and all that stuff too? I mean, it's, <laughs> every oven's different, right? So like where I'm in upstate New York at my, it's my dad's place. Um, cause I live in Manhattan most of the time, which has been obviously a pretty, dense epicenter. Um, and mm. I mean, I probably would have stayed in New York. I, I went down this week to visit, but I have a, a child. So it's hard to homeschool an eight year old in like a, like a 700 square foot apartment um, and maintain sanity. So I was like, we should just go out to the country, which has been honestly a blessing. And I'm very privileged and lucky to have that. A lot of people are in a much dire situation. Right. And um you know, my heart's go out to everybody who's dealing with this crisis in their own way. It's it's a struggle for everybody, but honestly, I I can't deny that I'm in a much better position than a lot of other people. Um, but it's uh, yeah. I mean, New York is is uh, is a beautiful, amazing place, but when you're surrounded by people all the time, it can be very difficult, especially if you can't be around mm -hmm. people anymore. Um, I don't remember what your original question was because I was. It's like, okay. It's okay. No, and I, I agree about I agree about New York. I love New York, but the problem is in New York you have to touch everything. You like have to a, touch everything. You have to touch it, and everything is a little damp and a little sticky, which is okay usually, yeah. but not today. Yeah. Not today. Not today. So. <laughs> no, and I and I'm like so sad because I get such a like. I always love New York. I love and you know when we right. when it started having cases, I was like, okay, well I'm gonna ride the subway, but like this is crazy. <laughs> like, and then each time somebody would cough, we'd be like, who is it? <laughs> you know? Um, and, and then like, you know, there's something beautiful about big cities like that, where you, at seven o'clock, everyone does cheer for the healthcare workers. And there is a sense of community and, um, right. and there is starting to be like a sense of getting back to some kind of normal there where, you know, you wear masks, outside and i don't know how long we'll all live like this but it might be for some time um I mean, i'm just lucky i do a voice on rick and morty that's like, that's 100 that's the, that's the beauty know, like, technology what we're talking right now technology is rad so there's there's a lot of good opportunities for this too and i i, I very much laud you for um uh learning how to do things because that's one of the things that's one of my basis is for humans as well i'm somebody yeah. who i bought i bought actually a cheaper house so i could learn how to do everything in it and mess it up that's and then great. move away and be like all right I know, how, <laughs> I know how to do tile i knew how to do floors i do plumbing i do all this stuff that's awesome yeah. it might break in a couple of years so i'm gonna need to leave right now but <laughs> exactly. but for now I'm, I'm cool i even learned uh leather working yeah. if you want to know how depth i got just because it seemed cool at the time and i'm like i'll take a summer let's figure wait, this out wait you learned what what did you say leather working 
Leatherworking. Oh yeah, leatherworking's cool. I like yeah. that. I know how to. I know how to also do lost wax casting. <laughs> I've done that, <laughs> which is also kind of scary because you have to boil metal to temperatures like thousands of degrees right. Fahrenheit and then pour them into things. It's very intense. No, I can do pretty much everything. I mean, but I. I, yeah, yeah, sa same. I mean, I mostly, I, I've always painted um, right. like uh, oil colors, but I, I mostly, I do, I love watercolors um, because they're, I, I could travel a lot. And so I've always been able to travel with watercolors and paint wherever I've been for work. Um, or like as an actress, you know, not just doing Rick and Morty, but in terms of like, I did, I've done guest star appearances in other states and countries. Sure. And so you, don't know anyone. <laughs> like you don't, you might not even speak the late. You don't know anybody other than the people you're working with on the show that you barely know anyway. And so I've always been um, in in a visual arts as well. So I will tend to find like if it's not a yoga class, because like sometimes yoga is like I've had enough yoga. Um, <laughs> I will find like a figure drawing class or right. um, some local art class you can go to and drop in and. I'm, it's like, I just kind of been uh, conditioned to learn how to do that as somebody who's traveled a lot and kind of grew up as an only, I like, I was an only child, so I was like eight and a half. So I kind of just got used to like doing my own thing, which is, right. you know, kind of, you're kind of a loner, but you're not, I don't know. It's no, cool. I understand. I actually live in LA and Las Vegas. I'm in Las Vegas now ah. and I get a lot of uh, celebs who come to town for conventions and different v things. And they're like, yeah. I don't know what to do. I'm like, let's go out. Let's go do some whatever. You're here. Yeah. Instead of you being stuck in a, especially comedians, stuck in a in a room that you're always stuck in, the, then you, know, you don't yeah. get a chance to eat or see anything. You're just kind of mm -hmm. like quarantined yourself already then. I'm like, let's go do stuff. Uh, you know what's funny when you're talking i'm I'm just kind of realizing now too you're back to your original hair color you're not blonde anymore right oh yeah yeah no, and so I, well because i was i was thinking like i was like oh she's not greek blonde anymore like it's not I that know, well i worked on a film um i i go to columbia graduate school and i worked on a fellow filmmaker's film um who's super talented and graduating from the program this year um she's a director and we co-write on things together so she she cast me in her we're both at gersh right now and she cast me in her her film and she was like i really need you to have brown hair and i was like okay i'll just go back to blonde after um but do you then feel, do you girl, feel different now do you feel different as a brown haired um you know i i you know it's it's very i'm very cool there's a different empowerment <laughs> I feel very, I'm very serious. I'm very much like a filmmaker. <laughs> you know, Somebody um, give me glasses so I can take them off. I no, listen. I have, I have like you know glasses for the internet. <laughs> right. <laughs> glasses for the internet. I'm gonna sound like I'm eighty. No, but I have, I have those blue light glasses because um, I'm on computers so much that I end up like you eventually get headaches, and right. I, I'd like to be able to see later in my life. Um, or you can call them gaming glasses, I guess, too, right? They, they like, take the glare. I understand what you're saying. I have a pair, too. They're a little yellow, them. right? They're a little yellowish the a little yellow. bit. Yeah, yeah. The yellow. I, I have them, too. Uh, it's just, I, I just prefer to think of them as my cool internet glasses as opposed to me being older and, and the glare dries out my eyes. Like, I don't want to. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, it's a thing. You know, we it, don't know. It is very much a thing. And actually, you know, it's funny. I, I was bringing up Greek because uh, this week has been very Greek filled. Earlier this week, oh, yeah. I talked to uh, Clark Duke because he directed oh, yes. his own movie, Arkansas, recently. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so I was like, well, let's keep it going. You know, it's almost been a decade since the show. Is there any, any fun thoughts or any positive things you still remember? about it oh that's so funny you know i mean i i think it was such a it was a great experience for so many of us because it was almost like going to college for a lot of them didn't go to college a lot of them ended up just doing greek i had been to college i ended up finishing up after we wrapped the show um and i i just loved i mean i loved the party scenes i loved the storylines um i worked my ass off to be honest um and it was and it taught me a lot about um, the process and being, you know, being on a on a on a show and the responsibility that goes with that. And, right. and it was it was uh, it was a great uh, learning experience for me. And and the people were lovely to work with. I mean, I'm I've always been kind of a, a weirdo, you know, like right. in certain ways. I I mean, Rick and Morty is like the perf. I've never I was never like a cool sorority girl. Like the fact that I played that character 
for four years was I was never like the cool it girl. Like I was never right. popular. So it was, it was like this really bit poor. She wore pink all the time. Like it was such a departure from how I really am in my actual life that, that Rick and Morty is definitely much more in my, my genre. So, um, it, it was, it was fun for me to experience that for sure. And I, and I have such fond memories and I'm, I'm happy. Like every time somebody says there, I think it's on Hulu again now. So we have had a lot of people um, reach out and just say how much they love the show and how much, how like wonderful it is and nostalgic for them to remember their their college years and it was it's very similar to what they experienced. So I feel um, happy to have brought some joy into people's lives for sure. Even during this time of Corona, right? You know? No, I understand, and I understand the weird thing too. I have a friend, <laughs> and she constantly posts, "I'm looking for a man, but he has to be the same flavor or weird as I am." And I was like, yeah, you need, I guess so. You need the same flavor of weird. You can't be that, that, that craziness. Uh, you know, speaking of weird, um, let's yeah. talk about really quickly as we close out the, the, the fans and how they kind of taken summer and Rick and Morty into their own world. And the reason I bring this up is because yeah. fans have made so much their own. So, I mean, if you look right here, we have some cosplay summer, we have some <laughs> anime summer, I mean, uh, they, they're just making it 100%. This one, I don't know why they thought Summer needs to look like this. I, I guess <laughs> she needs a cigar. She needs to, to enjoy life to its fullest. Um, and then this one came from an episode, but someone thought, you know what? I have a 3D printer, so why don't I just 3D print Summer? And I don't know what they're doing with that doll. I hope it's just <laughs> on a shelf somewhere. Like, I hope it's nothing nothing more, but... It's you fine. Know, that, it's fine. That, <laughs> what what do you what do you feel Listen, about there's definitely more than just there's a lot do you I'm search do you google search and do you do you go in depth and go oh my gosh oh my no, gosh well, like, i mean i don't even know what i'm allowed to i i feel like i feel guilty <laughs> like somebody had told me a friend so my i have friends who like love this show and i, I go to graduate school so they're all like right. some of them are a lot younger than me and they're like i can't believe you're on rick and morty and they sent me just like memes and they're like deep in reddit searches right and they'll be like yeah if you didn't get the watch the first few episodes they were on Pornhub and then I'll do like a Rick and Morty Pornhub search because they couldn't like stream it in other countries for a while right. back and then I'll be like okay like this is guys like there's some really rough stuff on there with like <laughs> summer <laughs> like <laughs> Rick, <laughs> right. like a lot of, I was like, okay, it's enough. It's enough. <laughs> so, right. One day you're going to get a call. Yes, Russia, we want to make a movie. We need you to do some voices <laughs> for us. It's, 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 it's crazy a little bit, but good money. Good money. <laughs> or like, I've also found there's been some, I'll sometimes, you know, it's like quarantine. So like, I'll sometimes get on some deep dive in like, I don't know what I'm looking at, but there was like some video, some TikTok of a girl there's, there'll be like pictures of people who are having like sex or like a picture of them about to have sex. And then there's like Rick and Morty in the background. And I was like, okay, like I get it. I was like, obviously I'm seeing this is a popular show at all right. time. <laughs> right. Like, Actually, and, and, you're, and you're like, I better be getting residuals off of this. <laughs> no, no, I mean, yeah. No, I, hear, I hear and I see me. I should be getting some money from this. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. It's fine. It's fine. You know, I feel like that's when you've really made it in a show, like there or or as a person, like um you Wait, know, I'm gonna see how this sentence ends. <laughs> or as you really made it as a person if you've made your way onto some website, you know, that you shouldn't be on, like with, with your head on somebody else's body, you know, like that's like that'll sometimes be a joke I send to friends. I'll be like, oh, look at this one I found, guys. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty rough out there. But for also, sure, like, I don't look like that, you know. So I know. <laughs> and it's and it's even worse now that people have to stay indoors, so they're trying to think of things to do. And right. if they already have a sick mind, like it's just gonna go deeper in that hole, deeper and darker. Like yeah. I don't, I just don't want to. I don't even want to know what. Uh, what like Pornhub searches look like now. Like, I don't even want to know what, what's actually yeah. going into the search curriculum. Uh, well, let's close out with Rick and Morty. Let's you know, this out. season is so much fun. First episode, of course, we had the train. We had the, uh, uh, you know, going through and breaking through all the different walls. So <laughs> much fun. Uh, you know, if you could just uh, explain, you know, the rest of the season in a word, you know, what would you say? I mean, is it just crazy or uh, do we get a chance to see some more summer kind of connection? I guess she, she had a very light, 
on this first episode, although she has special weapon, let's just say, right? Her female powers. Yeah, the Bechdel test uh, version. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's uh i just think you had to incorporate that if you're doing a story about narratives right right it sort of doubles on itself it's like satirical and yet truthful and yet also representative of the thing it shouldn't be doing so it was it was very it was very very meta Um, um the whole episode but yeah i mean i think You'll have definitely more summer stuff coming up. I feel like I know there's one episode. It's I I kind of forget to be honest. It's been a while. Yeah, animation it. takes a little time. It takes a little bit of time, but and um, so does Dan and Harmon. I, and, <laughs> and Dan Harmon, but also like we record them and then they air in different orders than the episode orders uh, we've gotten. Gotcha. Like sure. So we'll have like you know four four oh six will end up being you know four oh one right so. Um, it tends to change, but yes, there's going to be more summer. There's definitely going to be, I think there's a big story, summer storyline. There's awesome. yeah. Cause I'll, cause I'll, I'll remember, I'll remember Sydney, who's our line producer being like, this is a big one for you. And I was like, okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> I get there and it's like, I'll be like, okay, we're going into the booth and we're doing our thing. And you know, it takes me a little while to kind of warm up. Um, but then once I'm in, we're like in, and I'm just, you know, going through we go through each line down the down the queue basically um, right and i do it like a million times to the point where i don't remember not a million times i'm over i'm exaggerating but like do it a bunch of times um, well i think we're not saying literally a million times because that's when i would have been like come on you know what literally means <laughs> i know literally like no it's not literally. <laughs> Although your Greek um, character would have used literally a lot, so it's fine. She no. would have used literally all the time. I know. I do think <laughs> Summer has a lot of Casey influence in certain ways, for sure. Like, right. There's definitely a girliness to her that, but but there's a badass Summer, super smart weirdo thing that I love right. to do. Her, but the Valley Girl thing and like sorority girl thing is definitely in there. You right. can't, I mean, I kind of grew up in the Valley a little bit, like born in New York City, but raised in LA. So that part of me just exists based of the fact that I grew up in Southern California, you know? That's awesome. Well, I want to thank you so much for joining me yeah. today. So thank fun you. to talk to you. Um, like I yeah. said, we talked to, oh, just a little, a short time when you were with Sarah at Comic-Con before, uh, but yeah. you are a pleasure. I hope everything goes a- according to plan. I hope you have fun hobbies you learn some more comic cons we'll see you i hope so well yeah when we can do it unless it's all got to be in a digital world i don't know what's happening who knows if if i knew what was happening i'd be a a billionaire if i knew that was the last comic con i was going to for a while i probably would have been way crazier right i was i mean i was pretty comic con's always crazy but like i'll miss it right no, I mean, Sundance was the last real big event I went to. And so I was ah. like, if I knew that, I would have like asked, like, look, I need I need 30 minutes with everyone because I only need content for the next two years. Let's just go from here. So let's go what happens. So. Last time we'll ever be in the same room together. Right. Yeah, it's true. Right. It's true. We don't we can, know. We can just do the, uh, the the prison goodbye where we just touch the glass together, too. And just like, oh, <laughs> yeah. That's Stay strong. Be- Stay strong. I know the contingency plan will be something like where there is a glass between you, but like, and separate, like, we're just going to be in booths. Right. It's going to be like that show that's on that I, that I don't watch, but was on at the nail salon the last time I went. Pause. (laughs) The one that's, the one that's like the dating show where they're in their own rooms. Oh, I don't know what that is. Oh my gosh. No. Well, they're telling me I got, I got to let you go, but uh, yeah. yeah, And and trust me, I understand, you know, I, I, I kind of, like looking for like way to connect with people too. Yeah. My current dating profile says uh, uh, current body temperature ninety eight point three. So <laughs> that's great. That's yeah. right. I, I'm just gonna tell. I'm just gonna have a look. Credit score eight hundred plus. Body temperature <laughs> this, and then that's that that that. If that doesn't get you, I don't know what will. I don't know what you will. Have to start showing people your COVID test results. Like, <laughs> yes, I have the antibodies. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's. I mean, that's the next step. I you know. I, I already- guess so. Fine, it's fine. It's cool. We'll be, we'll be fine, and we luckily we have a lot of Rick and Morty to keep us busy along the way. Exactly. So, exactly. thank you and so fine. much for joining me. I okay. hope you have an amazing day and an amazing summer. Uh, uh, <laughs> either way, pun intended. Now, uh, even though I didn't plan it, uh, and uh, we'll hopefully talk again very very soon. Yeah, we'll talk soon. Thank you, Derek.